Okay, we're back on uh, doing part two of Man My Fingers there. Uh, right, so that pile on there is the cherry wood side of the Bryceland Viaduct. So um, we used to be able to access it right up till about 10 years ago. We used to be able to access the viaduct from there. There's only really two points you can access it. Um, the difficult way I took last week uh, at the back of Shangela Bale um, Plain Pitch at the back of Lockingstown Hospital and then somehow negotiate your way through a lot of torrents or you can climb up uh, from the roadway. Um, but um, I chose the more difficult way. So um, so here we are at uh, Cherrywood. So these were all fields right up to, what, 20... 20, 25 years ago. These are all fields, and um, so we'll just um, go to roughly where the viaduct was, or where the line was. So roughly it came through here. There was a bridge here, um, a farmer's access bridge that uh, you can see. One of the James O'D pictures, you can actually see the bridge in the distance from the viaduct. The, the line had just been recent. This would have been from late summer 1960, and the sleepers were still there, but you can see the, the bridge. The, I think it was probably removed in the 1990s. So you can see how residential and uh, commercial development has taken place in um, in Cherrywood, right up to the old Tully Crossing. So we'll just come up by here. You have the Lewis on the left there. And let me see, get my cursor correct. Okay, so you're coming up this road here. The line was roughly on the right here. And right up to Laughlin Town Lewis stop, where it's quite close to where the line was. So the Tully Crossing was. There's very little left of the Crossing now, the pillar posts have gone, sadly. And that happened in the last few months. And the, um, the building, let me see if I can just get over here. Right, just there. Okay. Sorry about my messing around here. Okay, so the, level, the line, the double track came in through here. The tracks were embedded in the road, but they resurfaced this road. And this is the section where you have, uh, in Johnny Nobody film, you have the priest and uh, you have um, him running after the train at that stage. The filming took place in May 1960. There was only one track left. and But you can, you can see the edge of uh, the gatekeeper's house here, but it's in a bad condition. The problem is there's all these hedges here and it's it's... It's hidden and it's just a victim of antisocial behaviour. So the line would have gone up through here. There is a telegraph post here somewhere left over from the line. And so the line is curving in towards the existing Lewis, which you will come up to. It's roughly Okay, just there. So the tunnel there is the existing Lewis. And basically, um, this section here would be the, the original alignment, which is now the Lewis, right up to just beyond Carrick Mine Station. To effectively be going on the old Harker Street line here. Uh, okay. So this section opened in, I think, October 2010. And um, see so another section of the Harker Street line that opened. Carrick Mines Station is just here. So it's just a building. It's, uh, it's a lot better than it was, unfortunately. Uh, again, victim of antisocial behavior with the graffiti all over it. And um, Hopefully it will be repurposed someday, but um, all of these are effectively just halts on man stations. And they, they built a new bridge over Glen the Muck Road. Just the water tower is still there, so that's, that's a significant feature of the line. 
uh, where the steam trains used to be fueled because the, the gradients were quite severe around here. And there you have the line going underneath the new widened version of the Lemmo Grove Bridge, which they replaced. And effectively you have a junction up here. There's the station that hasn't been opened, just there. So we have uh, the back of Brighton Road. We have the old Harcourt Street line. And that will take us up at the back here. I did come across um, a fine stone uh, bridge that went over the line along there and uh, took some pictures of it. It's in great condition, but um, there it is there. There it is there. So it's at the back of, excuse my camera, it's at the back of uh, Brighton Wood and it's an incredible feature. Just appears there, so it's worth going down at the back of Brighton Wood off Brighton Road. So we're coming up to Fox Rock, you see Leopardstown race course on the side there. So there's a potential for that section to reopen as a Lewis uh, from Fox Rock Station. Or they could have a loop line. I don't think that will happen personally, but here you have the car park. So Fox Rock was quite an extensive layout because of the, um, the adjacent uh, race course. So you had four lines here, you had storage lines and you had a, a level crossing there and there was quite a unique footbridge that spanned uh, three three tracks so there was uh, the up and down lines and then you had a, a bay platform for race specials so it's quite extensive with a locomotive shed signal cabin that was blown up during the civil war replaced and um, sidings that were used in the 1940s just for the uh, the drum trains their life expired by that stage so there you go there's a uh, fox rock station so i'll end the video now it's quite a long one seven minutes 22 and um hope you're enjoying this way of describing the line from from a google earth perspective please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel station to station thank you very much